Morning, English video, right? Morning, my name is Michael. For those who don't know me, I'm the sales expert, sales coach that started at KBC. And if you have any questions around sales strategy, sales pricing, how do you sell, how do you get revenue, how do you do things like cost of acquisition, all of that, you just mail me, ask me questions, and I'll help you. I have a whole series of sessions, there are about four. This is number two where we actually go from the beginning. How do you talk to customers? What do you say? What's your pr pricing model? And it ends with the fourth one actually, which is how to be a vice president of sales, where I will explain how to actually run sales teams. How do you measure them? How do you move them further? If you're alone, that's fine. I'll explain how you can you push yourself further into thinking outside, getting more deals. At the end, it's a re revenue game. It's all about going outside, acquiring customers. And this is one big part of it. I see so many presentations, I see actually so many sales presentations that are really bad. And they're really bad because they all do the same thing. You start by saying, hi, I'm Michael, I'm founder of Chaomatic, which is my company, and then I talk about myself for at least 20 minutes, and then I talk about my team, I talk about my vision, I do a slide of Steve Jobs with a fantastic quote, and then after about 20 minutes, I'll start saying, hey, and we have this product, and then I go 20 minutes on features. It can do that, it can do that. And then the guys or girls sitting in front of you are bored. You are not relevant, and they think <laughs> So what I'm going to talk to about today is how to flip that round completely. And it's a very simple, how to answer the question is you have to start with the end. What's the effect? What's the impact? It's the only thing you need to talk about, and all the rest will sort out itself. So today, I also want you to present something, because otherwise this is not going to work. It needs to, in life you don't learn if it's not, you know, if it's not tough, if it doesn't, is it, isn't it a bit painful. Now I'll be very nice, these guys know it, they've been here before, I'll be very nice, but I want you to show me some slides. I actually only need two slides, which is the beginning, because I only want to focus on the beginning, and I only want to focus on the end. The mid part you know. You know your stuff, you are the expert, you know more than any of your customers, hopefully, otherwise you shouldn't have started the business. But it's always the same thing, it's that first five minutes to capture attention and it's the last five minutes to keep him there, to get him into action, right? I'm looking at you. So, where do you start? The, the first thing we're going to go into and we're really going to dig into is really what do you say, where do you say, how do you sell actually? And that's the fundamentals that you first need to understand, is that if this is what they call a buying process, uh, it's called customer-centric because this is how people think. And let me give you a very practical example. I have a family agenda, it's my wife, and I have my personal agenda. Oh, sorry, I'm, so, I'm not wrong, it's not my personal, it's my company's agenda. But they don't, they're not synchronized. So that means I'm here all day and I just booked a lunch meeting and I, then I booked a dinner meeting in the train and then I come home and then my wife is sitting there with food and she says, you forgot about me. So I have a real problem at home because I have a lot of discussion. So I am aware of that problem. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to try and solve the problem and I'm going to educate myself by going online to YouTube, Google, uh, YouTube, how to, Google, uh, I need a solution. And I will ask some friends, I'm going to go to Cedric, and Cedric says, I have the same problem, try this tool. And I get into the selection phase. And when I'm here, I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to try it, and I'm going to say, ah, it's difficult. No, this is not something for me. Ah, I see something else, I'm going to try another tool, and then say, no, not really that. I'm going to go back, because I think this guy has no clue what he's talking about. It's true. So, <laughs> I'm going to go to somebody else. And then I say, I don't like the guy, I'm going to go to Google. I finally select something and then I'm going to integrate, expand it into my daily life. That is what people do when they buy your software, your service, your product, whatever. But there is something magical here, what most people do wrong. Here is a big dotted line. Because when you're here in the awareness and education phase, write that down, you should never ever sell. Because if you don't know me, and I walk up to you, and the first thing I say is, I'm 10,000 euro for a day, you want to work together? What are you going to do? You're going to go back and say, hey, this dude is crazy. Because you couldn't explain why, you had no value proposition. But that is what most people do. They have a website, buy now. They come in and they say, this is my product. Feature, 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 feature. That's how much it costs. Why would they? They don't know you. They don't trust you. 
So the thing you need to do is you need to actually be credible and you need to add trust. Actually, it's called authority and credibility. That is one of the things, it's another lesson where I'll explain how can you bring thought leadership. And the only reason why you do thought leadership and you would write articles, you would do content, blogging, movies, is to create authority and credibility. Because if somebody comes to you and says, I want to buy, how much does it cost? Actually, that is when you close. So after this mythical line, when you cross this line and people are giving buying, uh, buying, uh, how do you say that, when they give you the signals, buying signals, that is when you close business. Here, not there, here. Right? So in some businesses, you can do that in half an hour. I'm thinking B2C. In other business, this process will take you nine to 12 months. Right? But always think there is a magical line. Do never ever sell here. Here you sell, you close the deal. So three questions you need to, that's the same flow. There are three questions that you need to answer in any presentation, actually in any sales conversation, in whatever you do. And those are the three. Why do I need this product? What is the problem I'm solving? Why do I need it now, on this moment? And that's actually called sense of urgency. I have a lot of companies that phone me and say, Michael, I have a pipeline, but it goes so slowly. And I'm sitting at boards and then the board says, Michael, my sales team does not have a sense of urgency. So that word sense of urgency, that sentence is something magical. Everybody starts ticking on it. But sense of urgency is all about the need. It's all about the now. Why would I need it now? If I know I'm losing a lot of money every day, I'm not buying this, that creates a sense of urgency. But losing money is the cost side. So you have two things in any sales process, any, any, any question, any product you want to do, there are only two factors that work. One is, hang on, that's not working. One is cost reduction. I'm going to reduce costs. And the other is, I'm going to increase revenue. Now, if you're a business owner, you're all business owners, and you get 100K from me, and you need to invest, in what do you invest? This or that? Hands for this one. Hands for that one, just to see if you're awake. Yeah, right, okay. So, if you, your play, the only play you do is cost reduction, people that come in with revenue increase will always have priority on cost reduction. And that is something strange that people say, yeah, but you know, uh, yesterday I was with guys who do, uh, they're the biggest, um, how do you call that, inflatable air castles. They're the biggest, almost the biggest in Europe, 4,000 customers. V, the beast, V formation, that's the guys. Really crazy guys, took a very nice picture. These guys said, yeah, we come in and we do a team building. And team building is good because it's cost reduction. You know, it's one team and they started explaining the whole thing. And I said, yeah, yeah, try and find that. Find a revenue increase. Why don't you sell it saying you can have more customers once the customers. Imagine a BMW garage and I'm there and I have my kids with me and I'm standing there and I'm, I'm listening to this sales guy, but my kids are screaming and they're scratching the cars. They actually, this really happened, by the way. So I'm thinking, shit, so I don't have time, I run out. Right? Imagine there is this inflatable balloon, there is this thing, I come, the kids are completely happy, kids happy, dad is happy, and I'm really happy, I think these guys help me. That is a revenue increase offer. Always better than a cost reduction offer. Right? So always have that in mind when you do it. And that actually, this play can help you with the now. Why do I need it now? Why do I need to move? And I'm going to end the whole slide deck at the end with actions. How do you get people to move? And then the last one, why should I pick you? Why are you the one that's going to help me? And there is a big problem in the startup scene because nobody knows you. And you can say, I have the best technology, I'm the smartest guy, I'm... they just don't know you. And when people buy, there are several types of buyers. I'm gonna make life easy. These are the types of buyers in their life cycle. What is sitting here is called early adopters. Early adopters are people 
that if you say I have a new technology and you mention words like <coughs> blockchain and disruptive, they will jump and buy whatever you say, right? They're very hard to find in Belgium, by the way. Huh? If, if I would start a new business, I would go to the Netherlands because there people are faster and all of that. That's a big tip. Yeah? If, if you're getting stuck here, just try the Netherlands. People here on the other end of the spectrum are people they call that late majority. And what these people do is, if you say the word disruption, they will go back and say, yeah, 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 you can say so, but I don't need any disruption. I'm happy with what I have. So unless you show them 20 other people have bought it, they will move. So when you're a startup, you need to find these guys. But what happens? You send out a newsletter, you get people, and you start saying, I have a new feature. I have new mobile app. I had guys, they were so proud, said, Michael, we went from a desktop environment to a mobile app environment. That's so cool, mobile app. And I'm thinking, dudes, the whole world is already on mobile. That's not even news, right? But they were so proud. And I'm saying, yeah, but it's wrong. So imagine you send out a newsletter. And what you do, you say, I have a new mobile app newsletter. But you send it to those two companies. These guys will think, hmm, okay, interesting. These guys will say, no, no value. So when you make newsletters, when you do sales presentations, whatever you communicate, always make sure you have two different stories ready. One is new technology, funky, funky, funky. The other is you are behind. Your competitors are moving faster than you. Then they will wake up. So I will talk a lot about logos, examples, and then you say, Michael, I'm just started. I have two. Two, com two companies, I have two customers. So I, I'll show you some tricks how to get around all of that. Yeah? It's also sales, eh? it's not, let's say it's a different kind of truth sometimes. Huh? There are tricks to go around. So why should I pick you? One of the big things that I, I recommend all of you to do, first thing when you walk out here, is buy your own name as a URL, michaelhumlet.com or whatever your name is, and you start making movies, you start taking pictures of yourself, what you're doing, and you start explaining about life or your business for the simple reason is when people look at you, you will have authority and credibility in your field. I have another session where I explain in detail how I've done all of that. It really, really works. It's crazy how good that works. But the production side of doing that is really difficult. By the way, Cedric here just started on a journey with movies and pictures and all of that, so you can really see him in the beginning how that is working out for his business. Does it actually bring you leads already? Yeah. It starts? Yeah. Not too much, but yeah, that's how it starts, yeah. because you need scale. So everything you do, you need scale. Uh, what's really interesting is in the beginning, all your friends will like it, yeah. and then suddenly nobody likes it because your friends are like tired of you, and then that's when you have to keep up, then suddenly things start changing. Okay, so we've done a really basic intro. Now we're gonna get our hands dirty, and I'm going to take you through all the pieces how you need to do it. But first, I need a victim to do the first five minutes. I'm looking at you. Do you have all the cables and the, it's a HDMI? Yeah. So thank, thank you for, for coming. Uh, I will present you um, Panorami. But first of all, <coughs> let's check out, out how things change in the tourism industry. Uh, with the um, generalization of smartphones and the uh, new uh, selfie phenomenon, the way tourists are taking pictures on touristic places has drastically changed. In fact, <coughs> the, um, the way people are taking pictures is totally new. If you look at a picture of myself with my parents 20 years ago, when I still had, had hairs on my head, uh, you will see a small Raphael in, in, in the corner of the picture and the big uh, atomium um, uh, in the center of the picture. Now, with the selfie phenomenon, uh, it has totally changed and it will be first me and my, my children, for example, and you will see a little piece of the atomium in, in the background. So, this is um, something that is really bad because all those pictures that are shared every day on your touristic place has a lot of value. Uh, it's it's a, a very good promotion tool because it brings social recommendation. And social recommendation is the first key uh, decision factor for going to Brussels for a city trip or Vienna or something else. If your product uh, is Ray-Ban, uh, that is cool because your product is in the picture. Or of course, the, the glasses are in the center of the picture. But if your product is a, a city, a region, or a zoo, an attraction park, you have a problem. 
that's why we, we work on, on this, trying to make this selfie uh, evaluate to a, a new kind of selfie. In fact, a selfie that would combine the, um, the, the image of the people with the... Um, ah, and you have your video that is not playing, so it's a very good example of what you must not do on a presentation. Here is it. We take the advantage of the selfie, so the tourist is in the center of the picture, and we mix it with the advantage of the postcard. Because finally, 20 years ago, the way we were sharing um, uh, a stay in Brussels was to send a postcard. And this postcard was always the best point of view um, uh, available on, on the place. Here, with this technology, we um, manage to combine these two uh, advantages, your tourist in the picture and your uh, place um, uh, as well. How do we do that? The, um, the idea is that uh, tourists will trigger a distant camera uh, with their phone or with uh, an outdoor touchscreen kiosk and they will receive this kind of video so that they can share it on uh, social media or through instant messaging with their friends. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Can you go to the last slide? Uh, the last slide of my presentation. Yeah. Oof, it's, it's awful. My last slide is. Uh, How many slides? 14. Okay. I, I don't have any conclusion. So, how would you wrap it up? So, you're at the end. What would you say? Uh, when I go to a meeting, I always check. These are all customers, huh? huh? Uh, potential. Yeah, potential. But so. Um, uh, in fact, I always prepare my conclusion by uh, preparing the meeting and uh, trying to, to see where, uh, for which occasion we could do a first test. So, for example, yesterday I was uh, in Nivelle uh, city and, and so uh, at the end of the presentation uh, I, um, I asked them if uh, it was something that they could consider for the uh, uh, market, uh, Christmas market. Um, and, and that's how I conclude and try to, to get into a, a potential collaboration. Okay. Good. Guys, boys and girls, good and bad. Let's start with good. What did you like? I uh, just want to know who is going to pay for this and, uh, and then... Uh, Do you uh, understand I, what I he's selling actually? What so what is he selling? Because <laughs> you want feedback on yeah, sure. What is he selling? Kiosk that takes a picture in this case of the market, exactly. the Christmas market, and then they, they, they give you the money for no. it, and then people can put an application. I guess you send this picture, they take a picture of their own, and then it's ah. who's paying? Mm -hmm. That's your question. Yeah, probably the cities or something, or the event or yeah, true, yeah, yeah, the city. That's okay. okay. So the cities. So what's good and bad? Come on, guys. What's good? What did you like? The showcasing of the picture. That that's best. The media tells what it's really yeah. all about. That was just yeah. a great example. Yeah. Yeah. What did you like? What's good about the first slide? Maybe this one? This one? Yeah. You know what he did? He, he said he, he put his speech in the slides. You should never do that. Yeah. You know your speech. You should have actually put two pictures. Yeah. And you should have put some famous selfie or something like that and say a trigger. So I see a lot of people doing this. They tend because they're afraid that they're stressed, they're going to lose their speech, and they start putting all the text they have in the presentation. No, don't do it. You're telling a story. The more visual I you can be. I was listening at that point. Anyway. You were reading. I was trying to read it, uh, yeah. so I couldn't yeah. get the message uh, from the first slide. Also, there is no, if you do text, there needs to be an anchor for your eye. So there needs to be one word in red, or there needs to be something that, that attracts. So what I do at every single slide, or every, everything that's visual, even sides, I give myself three seconds and I think, what's the only thing I see now? Like that. That's the most important message. So if you're saying, I'm going to increase revenue 20%, you have 20% in big letters there. Everybody triggers that triggers, because you don't have anything there, right? So what I liked was the problem view. You start explaining what the problem is. <coughs> People want to know what the problem is. I, I'm happy you didn't start by saying, I'm this guy, 20 years ago, I had an idea, I was sleeping badly, and uh, yeah, don't do that. I hate it. 
Um, and after two minutes, you said, bang, that's what I do in the movie. Right? So I, I really like that, but it's not visual, too much text, you put your text in it, and I miss any real trigger effect that I'm thinking, mm, I'm hungry. Yeah? Your end, I'm going to talk about later. Okay. I like the joke. Sorry? I like the joke about your hair. <laughs> 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 Jokes are good. <laughs> Jokes always work. Jokes always work. Okay, guys. So, first thing you need to know, absolute key, is how do people, their minds work? How do they keep attention? And there are two peaks. It's in the beginning and at the end. Rather obvious. But for instance, who's really, really good in this, that stand-up comedy guys. They keep you entertained. Laughing is the hardest thing you can get, but they keep you entertained for an hour and a half. What do they do? They make little bridges. And that's actually what you should do with your slides. If you have to have, one of the big tricks is contrast. If all your slides are white, put one black in there. Good God, it's so simple. If all your pictures, classic one, all your pictures are here, well, the next slide, put your picture there or put your picture like that. And here your text, right? So one thing you need to do is contrast. Second thing you need to do is keep the real start as short as possible and get to the point as quickly. What is the point for almost any company? It's to talk about them. It's to talk about their problems. They love that because it gives you credibility because you understand them. You cannot say, hey, you, you have that problem. People don't like that. So what you're going to do is you're going to talk about their problem with somebody else. You're going to say things like, Last week I was with that customer and he had the following three problems and then you'll see the guy going like <gasps> exactly mine and then you immediately actually could say hey do you recognize them do you know? and then if they start doing all if you see all those signals you're right on spot and you have them by the balls straight away from minute one right because if you start doing agenda I mean you lose me after like in a heartbeat I don't have time for that but these guys do that. So you talk about their problem, you start showing the problem, ideally you can even visualize it, yeah? and you immediately get to the point. Classic one, if your demo is the most important thing, like his example, then you should have the demo within two, three minutes. What most people do is they start talking, yakety yakety blah 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 blah, and when people start falling asleep and everybody goes down after a while, after 20 minutes, they're gonna do the demo. And then I'm thinking, dude, you just missed all your opportunity, which is sitting here, right? So what you do here then, well, there you do the boring stuff. There you do the features, because you also, people want rest. You can't, it's very rare that you can do a meeting like these real power meetings of one hour where everybody's sitting like this. It's just too tough on most people, right? So what you do is you put your feature stuff here and where do you put pricing? If you have certain businesses, you have to mention pricing because you want to know what the budget is. If you do it, put it here somewhere. Because what you don't want is that you, if pricing comes, everything stops. Because after pricing, you need to get to the point of next actions. Let's do something. That's when you have the peak, right? This works on everything. This works on sites, this works on speeches, this works on presentations. It's just the same thing. Videos, blogs, everything. It's always get the attention, get the peak. I do a lot of video. My mo I have videos of 12 minutes. Nobody gets beyond minute two. Is it because it's bad? No, actually the in most interesting content comes after minute two and a half when people get. But so I realized I just cut and I put the most important here to drag them through the point. We'll talk about how to end strong later on, but let me first explain another thing. You already heard me saying visual. 80% of the people are, are visually inclined. That's why I draw while I'm signing. That's why I'm going to really, really make sure that it's very visual whatever you present. Every time when I look at sales presentation, the only thing you'll hear me saying is that, find the visual for that. How can you make this look nice? Design is absolute key. Things that look beautiful, people think it works and it's good. So in your opinion, uh, Michael, I have the good or bad habit when I explain something or, or I show something to the customer. I have a piece of paper and I draw lines. And That's it, pretty good. But I'm always scared that um, it pulls the attention away from my words. <coughs> so no, no, no. Because don't hear it anymore. 
No, because have you, you've seen me doing this. Yeah. I just emphasized my words. <coughs> so whatever you draw needs to emphasize what you're saying. It yeah. needs to clarify. It needs to strengthen what you're saying. Yeah. Right? So if you look to, for instance, real B2C selling closing techniques, guys like insurance guys, you know, they walk in and they need to close. They learn to write upside down. That's the first lesson they get. And they, all the things they do is the most complex banking products that, actually, I'm looking at you because he used to do that. All the most complex banking products, they will actually make a graph doing this. And, you know, they do the trick. Yes, and then when they talk about, I mean, it's really good. I mean, it's a really good trick actually to do. So when you talk about, yes, and then your business, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to increase your business. And then this is how a normal business looks like. I'm going to do, you know, it just enforces what you're doing. And sometimes you can actually really say, oh, you're a competitor, da, da, da. And then you, it just go, it works. Blocks, buildings, up, down. It's a really good trick. I keep drawing. So when I go to people, I say, give me something to draw and I'll start trying to, to, to draw the most complex things because people get it straight away. I'll give you one example, by the way, here. So I was working with a company called Etrix. This is a, a Canadian uh, GUI, user interface design company. So they're really good in designing stuff. And they did a, an action for our company and what they were very successful and they said, we attract, engage, convert and profit. And you see colors highlighted. I like this kind of stuff. And they asked me, Michael, this thing is not really, it's not really going well. So we have like three, four clicks a day. How can we improve it? And then I asked, uh, who, who do you aim this to? Uh, we aim it to executives. Ah, executives. So when you're an executive and you want to do this, when I'm sitting in boardrooms of, or being with my executive at the only thing I live in is Excel sheets, big numbers, and is diagrams and, and graphs going up and down and, you know, this kind of stuff. When you have all the blocks, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the stuff you live in and that's the stuff you get straight away. So I said, was it successful, this action? He said, yeah, yeah, we did really, really well. But if you look at it, you don't know what they did. They did something, but what did they? What where does the profit come from? So I said, you need to make it very tangible. So I said, redesign it, and they made this. And it says, increased purchase rates, percentage, quantified, and something that goes up. That's a no-brainer, right? If I look at it one second, I see things going up, always good. I see a number, which triggers me, and I see purchase rates. So the only thing I remember is purchase rates going up. These guys are good, I must click. So they went from a three to four clicks a day, to about 10 clicks per hour on this thing, right? So this stuff works. So when you think about visualizations, that's the type of visualizations I want you to make. Very clear, very strong messaging. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I see a lot of people not doing is when they start their story, it's like a bit like what we've just seen, it's a bit vague, you know? There is a problem and people do this and that. It's always a bit vague and business, real business guys, that's the last thing they want because everybody talks <laughs> fake to them. They want you to hit them with a the number because the guy or girl you're talking to needs to get budget for whatever you do to his boss. So all the stuff you show and do is not for the person in front of you, but is for that person to get the budget from his boss. So when I say, this is what I do and I cost 30K, it's a very easy. I take this thing, I go to my boss and I say for 30K, we have that increase, this is how much it costs, we're winning X. Very simple and straightforward. So I will make all my material for that. By the way, if you have 17 slides or 20 slides or 30 slides, never send 30 slides. When you walk out, you send two. And you say, Michael, it's tough, but I need to explain. Bad, you send two slides. Let them ask you to send all the rest because you need f ways to go back. Most businesses, you need five to seven meetings to get the deal done. So you need to find ways to get to the next meeting. Your goal is the next meeting, not to close the deal. That's too early because you're still in the education phase. This is education, authority, credibility. This is not even closing business, right? So you really need to rethink, reshuffle that presentation. The ultimate one, I'll show you a very good example later on today. What's good and what's bad. But if you could almost say, uh, if you could almost hit them with a number and say, I'm just giving you one, 20% increase, 
something like that with a number, you hit them with a number and it's always going to be one of those two, that always triggers and works. And then you say, but Michael, I don't know, right? I don't know. And it, is it true? I, isn't it normally 5%? Well, let me refine that a bit. So most companies, large consultancy companies, how do they do it? They say, we will guarantee you on this number, we will guarantee you 5%. If you follow, Everything we say to the detail, you might get up to 20%. So they take 20%. See? And then they put a big disclaimer somewhere saying blah, 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 blah. But there is nobody putting the number. So if you guys put the number and your competitors are not putting the number, put the number. They will work with you. Yeah? There is some risk involved if they start doing saying, oh, uh, we want revenue share, so we're only going to pay you very little, and then everything we sell on top, we're going to try and avoid that discussion completely because you're screwed anyway, right? So, three parts. You have an intro, you have a body part and a conclusion. You remember the peak. So let's start with the intro. Be trustworthy, get them to like you. So, genetics for the last million years made us do something very stupid. That is, when I walk in the room, you're going to look at me and say, is this guy going to kill me or not? Very simple. And then you're going to say, probably not. You know, he's wearing a tie, he has this thing, it's going to be very hard to strangle me with that thing. So, the second thing that happens is, that's the trust part. Do I like this guy or not? Does he seem like somebody that actually knows what he's talking about? That's the likability. If you don't have the likability, people will not buy from you. If they have the likability, people will buy faster from you, right? Another trick that I do a lot when I start is I'm gonna give references. I'm gonna, I, mean, I don't know if you've noticed actually, I start explaining and I immediately started explaining with customer X and I've been there and I talked about V-formation. That, 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 and it makes you think this guy really know, you know, he travels around, he knows this. That's a good trick you can do. And the other trick that you also can do is share common context. So I always open LinkedIn, there is always somebody that I know somewhere and then I said, hey, I've been there. That it works because you immediately give trust. And setting the scene is an important one, is I would come up, say something, be nice, da, 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 and said, okay guys, we're gonna get going because if you actually say we're gonna get going and you start, you take control of the room. Because that's one of the things you see a lot when you have a room of people, you have the famous alpha, the big boss sitting somewhere looking at you and he will always take control back because he is the alpha, he needs to do that, right? <coughs> but you in the beginning need to set the scene and need to get it going and then I keep very closely looking. That's why I'm looking at Tom the whole time because I know he's the boss fundamentally here. Exactly. So, what shouldn't you do? So, you've already heard me saying, don't do agendas. There are some exceptions to that. If you are presenting in front of an engineer, you have to say what you're going to do. Or if you have a crowd full of, I once did a speech in front of, a, for ERP software, which is bookkeeping, and I had 50 bookkeepers there, and I kind of did like this, I kind of jumped, and they all went nervous because there was no structure to it. So for those guys, you need to do agenda. For the rest, I really completely avoid it. I do not do team. I, I'm probably sure that most of you on your website have a team, front page team thing. Honestly, unless you're a double PhD that's doing something very funky with artificial intelligence, I would completely avoid team. You can say that later. Yeah? The why you've started it. But don't start with the famous story of 20 years. It's really, I heard a guy doing this. 20 years ago, I had a bad time sleep. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, maybe later. Get stuck on one point. Very good example. I was with a company called Citizen Lab. We went to, they make uh, civic engagement software. That means if you're in a community and you say, I want to have a street with, a, with a, like a sign that says, you know, for kids to play, then you want to give that idea to the, um, how do you call that? To the Gemeente Bestuur, to the city government. So they have a whole platform for that. So I go to visit the mayor of Waterloo. So we're coming in, me, sales guy, these guys. We walk in. And two things happen. One, this mayor acts a bit weird. He's like, hello, bonjour, uh, French guy, no, no, no. And he then stops and literally steps back and he watches. So I'm standing there and you know, I'm thinking I need to be nice, he needs to like me. And the sales guy next to me is completely, he blocks and he freezes and he's like, mm-hmm. 
And I'm like, <laughs> come on, hey, everybody likes to talk about their office, whatever. I'm like, hey, you just moved, this is beautiful. I've never been to this community, blah, 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 blah. You know, you set, set them on knees. Okay, so, so we get, I get, I grab the guy, I go along, we sit down, and the first thing this guy does is he takes his big screen and he turns it to us, and what's there is the website of the competitor. And he says, do you know these guys? So the sales guy completely freezes and he starts going in detail. Yes, but we're different than that. that. And he starts mentioning that there. Da, 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 da. So for me, he completely fucked it up, mm -hmm. right? Because the guy took complete control. He had no way his story was shit because he had to start at one detail. He could never recover. So how do you solve that? What I do is one, be nice, talk about something if you see on his desk. The second thing, when I, people do that to me, I'll say, You've done good research. They are really good. But let me first up and I've taken it back. You see? And I'm telling them, good, you're smart. You're smart. Everybody likes to be smart. And two, I'm going to say, I'm going to get back to it. But first, that is how you turn things around. You need to take control. That's when your presentation immediately needs to be relevant. The other thing, you know, we Belgians, we are really good in that. If you know Idol and X Factor, who is winning that? You ever thought about it? In America, it's actually, it's, it's very similar. We love the underdog. We love the person that you do not expect. You know, the little five-year-old or six-year-old that sings like an opera singer, or these very strange guys with a mouth that suddenly start. We like that. Everybody likes it. So don't do this classic thing of saying, yes, for this presentation or for this, I've been training. You know, this guy comes up, I've been having singing courses for 10 years. And you know it's going to be bad because they put the standard there. So don't do that. Don't say you're going to have the best product. Let them discover. Let, them, let people like to discover, like to dig into things. Give them that. I also do a session on demos. How can you have these little gems hidden, these little crystals where people can say, oh, I've seen a little joke here. Do that stuff. But don't start by saying you're the best guy. Typically, this happens in engineering worlds. I have a lot of these guys that come up and say, I have a PhD in mathematics for 20 years, and I have uh, done research on all of the things. And based on that, I've created a software. With yeah. A lot of companies, especially when you sell that kind of technology, you go to boards, and there are very smart people there, and they are very protective. These are these guys. If then somebody walks in and he's much smarter than them, they don't really like that. Right? So you have to be careful where you are. These guys, they actually like people that are smarter than them. See? So it all depends who is in front of you. So you shouldn't do that. Now, so what do you do? You open up, always say the same thing. Hi, I'm Michael, founder of Kiamatic. Very short. Always say what, who you are, what you are. And then you try and jump into the problem, saying, I've met a last week I was with that customer, or I'm just back from there doesn't need to be true, kind of true is good, and you mention the problems, you already get engagement, and then at a certain stage, when you've defined all the problems, you need to say, why? I don't know if you've ever heard of Simon Sinek, anybody knows of him, Simon Sinek? If you do not, I'm going to write his name and you should watch it. Simon Sinek, and he has a speech on why. This is Incredible story, guy says, I woke up and I suddenly thought, why? That's how he starts. And he starts explaining why certain companies do certain things, how they speak about it. So that is what you need to do on that point. That is to say, these problems are the reason for my existence. That is why I started this company. That means you're fundamentally engaged into solving this problem. And that actually will enhance your value. And then you start explaining Eh? So you go from their problem, you go to why, and then you're going to explain only then when the peak is going down, you're going to explain them how you will do it. And then you will say to them what. You see? It's actually that sequence. What do most companies start with? They start explaining what. Then they say the famous, we have our methodology, one, two, three. You see that on any website. It's like, right? You I mean, doesn't pro you are a solution. It doesn't really matter, but you can do how if you really want to do it. Sometimes people ask, especially these guys are going to ask, how exactly 
what's your methodology? Because these guys, they need to know that because they want to explain to their boss, right? So this is the sequence. And then you can do pricing and pricing is sitting in the what? So we get to the conclusion. And the conclusion, you need to do something else. Because you started with a problem, you've explained all of these things, you need to close the loop. You need to explain how you've solved this problem for that person. Because otherwise, you have open ending. You could say all the best things you've done, but you still need to prove, you still need to walk your talk, you still need to say what you've actually done. You know the 20% I drove? This is the right spot to put it in. I came to those guys, that was their problem, I actually, <coughs> blah, 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 I actually solved it. That is the way I've done it. And this is when you can put other references. It's, if you do not really have, I mean, use cases and references are really strong. And you'll see, especially these guys, they will be very focused on use cases and references. What have you done somewhere else? Because they want to improve their business, they want to say, they, they, these guys have done it. Then if you sell to those in the beginning, you don't have use cases, you just have kind of an idea what it could do, you're working on another methodology, right? But I do like use cases, it gives you a lot of power. You see a lot of guys actually having all the logos there, then I'm thinking, yeah, did they really, really work with them? But in some cases, they, they really did. You could actually say to create credibility from day one. That's something else I've seen and I really like it, is to say your opening slide. Uh, this, is, this is the company name, this is your name, and you actually put in your opening slide logos. You can do that. Because then you say, hi, I'm Michael, founder of Chaomatic, and you don't need to talk about it. You just leave it there. People see it immediately and they think, ooh, I see a big name, right? So what I saw some startups, they did some interesting stuff. So they sold to, uh, to like a subsidiary of like in a little village, they sold something small to uh, BMP Paribas. So of course, what did they do? They put a big BMP Paribas logo in there. I mean, there are lots of tricks how you can improve it. The thing you always need to remember, logos work in the beginning. Once you go down a bit, People buy from people. It's good to have other people talking about you. So if you want to explain features, one of the magical things you can do instead of just, instead of just starting you know, this, this list, typically what people do is then they have the diagrams of the, of the cloud and APIs and it's all very complex. What you do is different. You just do this. You took, put a nice picture of a, uh, of a guy or a girl smiling, you put your feature here, and then some text, what this guy thinks, and then you can explain it here. What will people remember? Their eyes will go to this person, think it is a real human, I'm gonna trust him or her. This is what they do. These guys are saying they're talking about them. So actually, if somebody else talks about you, it always works, that's a referral system. If you want to go to Barcelona and you, you want to see what's up there, who are you going to ask? The guy who read a book about it or the guy who's been there five days? So if somebody asks me, Michael, I need a sales tool, or I want to read, Michael, I want to read a sales book. Whatever book I'm going to tell you, you're going to trust me. You're going to say, this dude knows what he's talking about. It must be good. That effect is what you do here, right? It's a completely different way. I've never seen it. I see it in websites. I can show you some examples. I've never seen it done in a presentation, but it could be pretty interesting. Or you could do your feature and put the guy here saying something. This is your feature. Does the text need to correspond to what you're saying here? No, because nobody will really read it, by the way. Yeah? I did a lot of research on websites when people give references. If you look, you have tools like Hotjar that can actually see how people are watching. Nobody reads it. It's very intriguing, but people just see a face, they see a name, and it needs to move faster. Good? I got a small yes. detailed question. Um, uh, when, you, when you want to present uh, or reference, you know, we work for this uh, company, we did this project for them, uh, should I then attach the price 
because our service is very customized and sometimes we feel we have to give them a reference of look if this work we did for this amount of money. Uh, so so what's good to give an idea, I call it a budget idea. Because you wanna know in which budget are they. So you wanna say I wouldn't put the amount in there, I would say unless it's really low, because that triggers, I would say this type of project we do for a budget around 30k in your case. I'm just thinking out loud, that's something, it's going to be something like that, I guess, right? So that is something you can do. If I look to Cedric, he has a really, really licensed mechanism and he's going to say, person X, this is the price. If you are not in that business, you can say, guys, you have to think of a budget between, I'm just saying something, 15 and 20k, but to do that, we need a proper analysis. And then you have your next action, right? And what your next action is, here, you're going to let them choose. And the big trick is to have a slide <coughs> that does this. So let me first draw how most end slides are. Picture, name, email, questions. True? Is that a good slide? It's a waste of space because they know you, they have your card in the meantime. Why are you saying questions? So let's make this completely different. Let's make this actionable. You say next actions and you just name it, right? There's nothing wrong in saying it. And you give them two options. Why two? Because if you say one, people will do the opposite because they don't like that. It's like putting themselves with the back against the wall. So you always give two options. Why not three? Because three is too much. My dad used to sell, he was an artist, he would sell paintings and he was so proud of his work and I'm pretty sure you're all very proud of your company. And what he would do, he would show one and then two and oh, watch this. And he would show like 50 paintings and the people would be <gasps> and they could never choose. And funnily enough, they would always go back to the first two things he showed, always. So he started finding ways to go around that. But what you do is two choices and you basically name them. Just giving ideas, uh, proof of concept, uh, analysis, uh, next meeting, um, whatever, right? Test, trial, many things. Quote, actually, yeah, quote could be it, right? And what I do then, and then here you put your, your uh, contact details. Actually, I don't know if you've noticed, but I put it on every slide, right? Why not? And then even then, people after two-hour sessions ask me, what's your email again, Michael? <laughs> so, um, that's, maybe I was keeping them really good busy. Contact details, and uh, that's about it. And this is an efficient slide. Now, what I do is something intriguing here, because what people tend to do is they show a slide and they start reading. You, you start talking about it. You don't talk about it. You're just going to say, the trigger of saying, I am at the end of my presentation, wakes up anybody it always sparks a peak a peak sparks a peak peaks a spark peaks a anyway so people watch and then you start wrapping it up and you don't talk about this you just leave it on there and why is that because if you're in a closer room you're sitting with people if you keep staring at their eyes everybody's kind of after a while gets nervous and wants to look away and what's the resting point of their eye this slide I have it sometimes when I don't know what to do and I'm thinking, okay, mm. I start watching the slide, start reading the slide and people will get, they're mentally triggered to do something. They will want to do something. They want to make a choice. People want to make choices. They do that. So they'll be thinking, and at a certain stage, if they really don't bite because that happens, then you say, I've put up two options that we could and you kind of get them in the rhythm. In many cases, I don't even need to talk about it. They basically will say, I have a third one. That's okay because they got in the action mode. You want to walk out with the next action. Your only goal is the next action. Is it the next meeting, a quote, whatever. Don't make quotes too fast, by the way, because I know sales guys that are measured on making quotes and basically they, everybody they go, they, they send quotes. You first need to qualify if it's really something for you, right? But I know quotes is a good thing. What's your top uh, two of action? Depends. Okay. It uh, depends. <coughs> if I go to large corporates, it's going to be about next meetings. It's going to be about getting information from them to actually produce something, something valuable that that guy can go to his boss. Always think, 
what does this person need to go to his boss? All right? Unless you're talking to the board. If you're talking to the board, what you're going to say is, I am going to solve. Typically, board members' strategic thinking is, I want you to solve all my problems. Vision, problem. How do you do it? I need to do an analysis. Or I can do a workshop with your team. These are two dates. See? Or I need to see your boss. Could be. Or I need to see a technical guy. Or I need many, many, many options. You kind of need to play around and, and test what works best. Uh, proof of concepts. I know many guys that try to sell proof of concepts. Don't forget, a proof of concept is good, but can delay your sales cycle. Right? You have to be really careful with that. Because sometimes people focus so much on the proof of concept, and that means they're six months behind. You, if you can sell straight away, sell straight away. Don't put barriers there. Right? It's only when they really are hesitating, you can say, you know what, let's try. See? So I'm always going to use that at the end. If they, you're like, yeah, no, let's go for it. Let's, do, let's start small and expand. I avoid box. Start small. If they really are, uh, I said, okay, I'll make you an offer you can't resist. Bam. Right? But you need to get them into the next action thinking. Good. Now, pressure is high. Let's try somebody else. And suddenly everybody's typing. Eh? Yeah, then they were paying attention. Cedric, do you have something? Yeah. Come on. In Dutch? Y your English is OK. Come on. Hello, I'm uh, Cedric Verkouteren. I'm uh, from Roger. Uh, we've met today uh, to discuss uh, a couple of opportunities. Um, Roger is an internal communication platform, uh, and uh, but uh, the idea is, uh, yeah, my English is very bad, so <laughs> don't uh, rely on that. Uh, the idea is uh, founded in uh, 2015 because I was working in a uh, big corporate uh, and uh, I was uh, frustrating uh, myself uh, in the total communication uh, flow. Uh, we didn't receive all messages, we didn't uh, uh, receive all procedures, uh, we didn't know uh, a lot, uh, not, yeah. My name was me, I want to be Can you handle Dutch for a while? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thank you. I do meestal in Nederland, so you put a little bit in all. Goed, het idee is ontstaan in uh, 2015. Ik was aan het werk in een vrij grote corporate. Um, daar ging toevallig wel wat uh, verkeerd in zaken die interne communicatie. Maar vooral omdat uh, die organisatie zich focuste op uh, te veel verschillende communicatiepatronen en te veel verschillende tools. We hadden een, een populatie aan arbeiders, we hadden een populatie aan bedienden, zelfstandige kaderleden. En ze kozen altijd specifieke oplossingen voor een specifieke doelgroep. Ja? Uh, vanuit die ervaring ben ik uh, gaan nadenken, uh, ben ik, uh, uh, heb ik een idee neergeschreven en uh, ben ik op uh, eigen initiatief een uh, market research gaan doen voor acht maanden. En ik ben een aantal referenten gegaan van BASF tot Studio 100 tot AZ Nicolaas. We hebben zoveel dus mogelijk sectoren bezocht en graag deel ik van jou, uh, met jou vandaag die uh, bevindingen. De manier hoe we werken is zeer snel aan het veranderen, dat zal je ongetwijfeld ook wel weten. Niet enkel van 9 to 5 to working flexible. Ja, mensen werken op verschillende locaties, verschillende afstanden, verschillende shiften. En de grote vraag is hier, hoe gaan we die mensen geconnecteerd houden? Ja. Het tweede element dat we geanalyseerd hebben is dat heel veel bedrijven aan het afstappen zijn van enkel en alleen die corporate software te gebruiken. Denk maar aan SAP, CRM systemen. Uh, denk maar aan ja, gewoon de logge uh, laptops die we krijgen binnen uh, organisaties. Uh, weten de mensen van oké, okay, uh, het multichannel verhaal is de toekomst. Uh, denk maar aan alle verschillen, verschillende applicaties, verschillende dragers. En de Nokia's 3310 van uh, gisteren, die liggen meestal wel al in de vuilbak. Een derde element is dat heel veel bedrijven zich goed uh, beseffen dat kruisbestuiving vanuit de verschillende linies zeer belangrijk is. Dus dat het, het, het beslissingen maken uh, top-down en het gewoon versterken naar iedereen, dat dat stilletjes aan verleden tijd is. Maar dat we toch wel moeten nadenken van oké, okay, hoe kunnen we bottom-up vanuit die talenten die in onze organisatie rondlopen, hoe kunnen we die ideeën, die bevindingen en die meningen naar boven brengen. Ja? Waarom zou je daarvan moeten wakker liggen? Waarom zou je moeten wakker liggen van het informerende gehalte en het connecterende gehalte? Dat is omdat we geanalyseerd hebben dat wij met die communicatie toch wel een aantal fundamentele problemen kunnen oplossen. Dat, dat, dat. Because you keep talking for two hours. Mm -hmm. right? Can yeah. you go to the last one? Ja. Yeah. And end it. Ja. Yeah. Oké. Okay. 
We hebben nu gezien dat het probleem was. We hebben gezien dat we het aanpakken. En uh, dat is ook de reden waarom dat wij Roger gebouwd hebben. Omdat Roger synoniem staat voor een betere interne communicatie. We maken ons sterk dat more employee engagement gekoppeld aan een betere interne communicatie uiteindelijk resulteert in een betere performance en uiteraard ook een betere rendabiliteit, solvabiliteit van het individu, maar ook van ondernemingen. Ja? We are trusted by, of we zijn geaffineerd ondertussen met ADPO, chemisch bedrijf met uh, Duvel Moordgat. En uh, we zijn on speaking terms met een aantal grote uh, organisaties uh, en dergelijke mee. En ja, hier sta ik uh, altijd in mijn slide. Ik heb hem nu niet gevisualiseerd, uh, want we hebben in de laatste sessie dat wel besproken. Maar hier sta ik de vraag van wat vond u ervan als persoon? En ik ga altijd direct tot actie over. Dat is een beetje gebak in mezelf, maar ik, uh, ik zeg altijd van oké, okay, goed, mogen wij een analyse maken? En daar ook een offerte bij sturen. Dat is mijn pas. Mijn closing. Good. Beginning. Good and bad. Hit him. He's getting honest feedback on his slides. It's right. good. It's easy now, right? And no, it's not easy because well, he did some mistakes. Well, the bad, it's, the, it's easy because you thought it was just yeah. two minutes. Oh, ago. but just say it. Yeah. The, he's yeah. a real, you see the difference. He's a real hardcore sales guy and he talks, talks, talks. His biggest danger is he talks too much. He's too, too fluent. Mm -hmm. It's a problem, by the way. You kind of. Yeah. Break it easy. Come on. Watch. Yeah. Say what do you think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, my, my attention span was in the middle of the curve and, and I still didn't know what you were doing. Yeah. And I was okay. already kind of okay. yeah. lost. Okay. You, you. Uh, somebody else. Uh, I had in mind <laughs> what, what's the difference between Roger and Slack? Actually, I will explain it uh, <laughs> on a one-on-one. -on -one. Right. <laughs> I actually wrote watch a Slack slide share. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. So, in fact, if you skip yeah. the first part and start it already with your, with your first slide, second slide, it was a good slide to start because you were speaking about problems, so how yeah. the world is evolving. And, uh, ah, yeah. yeah. And so, your, English English your, yeah. your visuals are. Yeah, but you don't have to know it. Yeah. I have to train on it. I have to train on And you shouldn't say my English is bad. Okay. Yeah, because. Just yeah, go Other stuff? What did about the end? I really go back to the. I really, really liked this one. Maybe we should start with that slide. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> honestly, yeah. I really like this because yeah, this is the problem you're solving. <coughs> Actually, this is what you're solving because you started saying you did the thing. You said I took <coughs> three minutes of talking and I'm just watching the logo. I'm thinking, dude, you you miss the canvas. You miss the story. If you start this and you said this is another company, what's their big problem? And then you end actually with this slide. Mm -hmm. And actually, if I see better performance and profitability, I want to know a number. Yes. That's the only thing I care about. What's the end effect? You need to have a number. Okay. This is how I would start. And who said it? Really. But I love the graphics. I love the visual, the graphics. All of that is nice. Okay. You're just a bit too fluent. Yeah. What I don't like, for instance, is those slides with one sentence, and then you go to the next one. They have no value for me. It's a bit. So if you do this, with the story of a company, mm -hmm. and then you start with problems, and then you solve all the problems, and then the why comes behind. Because you started with the why, mm -hmm. you need to do it later. Okay. Yeah, you Pardon. should really have the logo here, because uh, if, if uh, you don't give trust, I, I'm going to be skeptic. I think everyone is going to be skeptic that internal communication really leads yeah. to more oh, It's a, it's really a vague topic, yeah? it's a difficult vague topic. It's vague, yeah. yeah. So you need to make it very tangible. Yes, but uh, on the other hand, uh, right, everything point. that he says is common sense. I mean, yeah, yeah, I yeah. will not go against this. So, no. uh, for me, it doesn't but, need to to. Do uh, you put money in it? <coughs> this has a number. I would. Yeah. Think, oh, I never thought about how much money this could make. Yes. Okay, but I mean, I don't need his personal story, knowing that he was in a co big no. corporate before, because yeah. oh. what he will explain later, I will agree with it, with him, no. because you, you cannot go no. against that. So. But isn't it necessary to give your story a little bit credibility? Because of course he uses the logos at the end, but by saying I work in a big company and I saw this and this and this, then it it it, it gives a little, in my opinion it gives. A yeah, but he should do it way story. shorter. If he I, starts with this slide and he starts saying I used to work in a big company, and and what were the big problems? Duck, duck, duck. Very functional. Very. It's much stronger because you. You, you tended to go with blah blah and, yeah. you know, and that's, I know it, it's, it's a sales thing. I, I used to do that all the time. Blah, 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 blah. You have to be careful. This is much more like you say. And then you put the logo, and then at the end, you go back 
to what this brings to some of these guys. And you should add a testimonial here. Uh, yeah, since we have built a rudder, blah, 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 and then a logo of the company. And then don't talk about it. Have it there. Yeah, just don't talk Have about it. There, it. Have it there, but then people won't challenge yeah. the common sense thing because it is common sense, but how big is the how big is the problem? There are a lot of things that are common sense. One of the things I see a lot of for me it's like real classic junior sales behavior. They have their slide deck and they will go through every slide. <laughs> and I don't do that. I sometimes skip completely. I'll be watching people a lot. And when you start seeing them fidgeting or you know, on their mode, you know I need to move, I need to move. And then I jump, boom, to the other slide. Don't stick, but you just know. That's why I said, why do I only focus on the beginning and the end of any slide? Because it's the only first five minutes and the last five minutes that matter. Actually, all the rest is just stuff. Yeah? So you need to, I would flip it around. It's actually really good idea. Okay, well, try it. I see this. The other thing that also works to get credibility and authority is to talk about research. Research is something everybody craves. There are whole businesses based on research where you can say, look, 30% uh, of employees, da, 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 some of these numbers, that works. I get a bit nervous around them unless I know they're from a really trusted source or they have this wow effect, something I didn't know. If it's too generic, don't go there, right? If you have to say st stuff like, uh, uh, we are living in a connected world, Everybody's on mobile, ah, duh, right? I'm like, dude, pfft, he's not. In your previous slide, you said it's called Gardner. Yes, because what I don't like about Gardner is this stuff. <laughs> the famous, do you, do you know Gardner? Some, who knows Gardner? Yeah, it's called the Gardner Quadrant. And what you do is large companies pay these guys to do research and put them, <coughs> get them on there. And then you can say, I've been certified by Gardner. And I'm, I just... It, it's these people that are interested in Gardner. These people, they want research, right? That's where you have to go all the research stuff and da, 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 da. That's where you have to bring them. If you don't have those guys, just ignore it. I, I've been in so many presents. I was at the Web Tomorrow, Web Tomorrow in Amsterdam, I'm sitting there in this beautiful room and then the guy from IBM came on, IBM Watson. I'm really curious, you know, 20 years in the business, really, really high up smart guy. And he started with this Gartner slide, and we're the best in IBM. 20 minutes IBM, IBM. He had 30 minutes, and the last 10 minutes, what they actually did. And I thought, damn, guy, you just, I mean, nobody in this room will work with you, except maybe one or two of these guys. Good. So, we start about, we're going to do a bit about ending, some tip, tips and tricks here and there, and then I'm going to show you good and bad examples, some other examples of things that, that we've done. One of the things that none of you guys both did, actually, is a real strong ending. And a strong ending is, like I said, in the beginning you set the scene, you take control. That ending actually, you actually take control to let it go again. And it's something stupid, but why doesn't anybody tell people that they're proud about their product or they believe in their own product. Nobody does it. I don't get it. If you look at, at the big guys, the big presenters, eh, and I'm really talking about the Elon Musks of this world, the only thing they say is, I believe. And if somebody believes, people tend to believe the guy because that guy is believing it must be right. So you should end by saying, by not saying, this is my last slide. The typical one is, I hope I didn't bore you to death. Good God, why would you do that? Why would you say that? You just killed whatever you said, right? And I hope you liked it. Hope is not a good word. Hope is not a strategy, right? And look relief, like, I'm done. Damn, I'm done. I'm going to get the beer now, right? So don't do that. You have to say something like, uh, something like I, absolute, I am absolutely convinced that my product or my technology or my service will, I'm thinking of you guys in the background, will improve your pop, 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 whatever, right? Say, just say your belief and you strongly believe it will help them on that front. And then you pause dramatically for two, three seconds and then you say, any more questions or how can I help you? And, and, and by doing that, you've actually, you started, and you really nicely stopped it. 
and ex funnily enough, they will respect you because otherwise what's going to happen, you're going to sit there, it's going to be one big mass question, and then suddenly you get up and then a guy has to run out and then, thank you for coming and you walk out and pff, nothing was gone. And nobody does it and it's because nobody does it, you need to do it. Right? And it's just a brain thing. In the beginning, I had this little paper and I was doing and I just would almost read the sentence just to be there and after a while you get, you really get into the flow of that. Okay. Driving for action, um, that's why I already talked about next actions, so meaning that you need to decide up front what you want these guys to do at the end. And then a lot of times is repeat the message, whatever you do. A lot of things, times I've seen that customers actually will push you in a direction that they have a problem. And I have a very weird story about, I don't know if you know the company, Manual.2. These guys are also in the startup community. They actually make online manuals. They make them for like Ikea and I mean, they're huge. And when they just started, they went to a customer and uh, to, the, to the CEO and the CEO said, we need it. So they went to a company like Siemens, you know, they have lots of manuals. And he said, we need it. I'm going to send you to a local director and he's going to take the project with you. So he gets to the local director thinking, I've closed the deal, does his whole story. And the local director goes like, this is really interesting. I really love the stuff you do with manuals, but I actually have another problem. I want you to make a Christmas card. Uh, technically, you could make a Christmas card, but he said, okay, let's make a Christmas card. And he just went all wrong because he's not in the Christmas card making business, right? So you should say on that moment, that's very nice. I'll give you a name of somebody who makes Christmas cards. But in the meantime, we should do this because that's going to bring you revenue. That's going to, so you take them back to that point, right? Learn from the master. I is a guy that I follow a lot. It's called Gary Vaynerchuk. This guy is He's, an, uh, he's really, really good in explaining. And, and when you watch any of his movies, I, I always think I need, to do so, I need to do something now, right? It's a really good driver for action. You can learn a lot of tricks. He also has a lot of tricks on how to keep attention. And on top of that, he's going to learn you how to do all the social media stuff because that's what he does, actually. You want me something it takes about 20 minutes to do it? To do the story? Because I just want to show you the highlights. And you have to know that in 50% of the uh, cases, I do this um, in a um, Skype meeting, which is actually kind of difficult because I never met the guy. I see I, have, I had him on the phone, I had him on the email, and then I, I uh, organize a Skype meeting and I share my screen and we go through it together, uh, which is difficult and you have to practice a lot. So never do this when you need, uh, when you really want to get a customer, don't do it like that because you will fail because it's the first time it's very difficult. That's my yeah. uh, opinion. No, because in sales you need the relationship aspect yeah. in, any, in any form or shape. And you don't have, the, you just stay not, so it's easy to say no. Yeah. So you have to actually fix yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And that's the reason um, that I will start with saying I have another company which is called Festicam and we, are, uh, we have 15 years experience in uh, producing festival campsites and what I actually say is and that's making me the expert so l listen because what I'm going to tell you will be new for you. That's the, the story behind it. I start with, I have seen Simon uh, uh, Simon is Simon Sidnek, Simon. Yeah, the why. Yeah, I start with the why. Why should you listen to me? Because in UK already 3.5% of the people uh, sleeps in a pre-pitched tent. On Dreamville that's 80%, 18%. So I use already the name Dreamville because everybody knows it, of course. And we expect that by 2018, 5 to 10% of the festival campers will sleep in a pre-pitched tent. And then I started with my but What you do here is the fear that say yeah. you're behind. That. You're That's behind. The, the, you're behind. Yeah, you're, you're already. Because now for season 2018, I want to. I have the idea, I just got the idea to, to use this slide, but make kind of a big cross, I don't know, and then say, Norm, uh, until last year I started with this slide, but now it's already um, too late. So I will tell you another story because I, I want to use. Um, I want to make it stronger. And then typically, and that's uh, the most difficult thing to do in a Skype meeting, I start with explaining the market. I thought I did it last time also. So the three market segments, but I draw it always. I, I've practiced it more than 100 times. I, I draw the, the pyramid 
like more than 100 times so I can drive with my eyes closed and I start with um, one advice yeah. in a Skype don't show immediately the whole picture no, no. build it up yeah. because otherwise they'll be switching I, off. Yeah, of course and when I give the presentation on in a one-to-one -one, in a face-to-face -face meeting I will all, only start with the title and the subtitle and then I take a sheet of paper and I draw it because it's much stronger so I put my uh, computer uh, my PC away I draw it and then after the drawing, I say, but I also have a clean uh, version of it, and that's this one. So I explain the market and what, what are we uh, selling, what am I um, uh, come to explain to you. And then uh, I get with my own product, I jump back to the market. So I created the market and then I jump with my own product uh, uh, back to the market. Then the segment, the festival visitor who want an easy and affordable sleeping place. Uh, age, people who arrive late, and foreign festival visitors travel without much uh, luggage. And I already mentioned my competitors' colleagues because they will know them, but I push them away in another market segment. Otherwise, they will say, Yeah, but we have already uh, uh, Festipis, which is my biggest competitor. And then I say, Oh, that's actually a great product. Uh, but it's a different market segment because remember the pyramid I, t I draw and then they say yeah I think you're right or they say no you're not right and then you know it's going to be hard to I'm, I'm going to say something immediately there are too many colors I have a big yeah. problem with the design of the colors too you have a square why don't you make it a tent on its own and there's a lot of text so I'm just thinking yeah. can you visualize this more or can you split it up but yeah. there's so much information it's just it should be an infographic or something. Yeah, two you need to do it different. Yeah. Two personas. Yeah. Sorry? You create two personas. Typical image or picture yeah. from mm -hmm. one yeah. type and the other type. Yeah. Actually, we use it, we yeah. do it in this one. But yeah. I agree on the colors. Yeah, uh, I agree on the look. Yeah. And, and but by the way, you don't have contrast, huh? Always 4 or 5, always 4 or 5, always. You need to find, yeah, you need to layer yeah. it differently, have a black back. Just yeah. Every slide just needs to be a bit different, so you're yeah. being triggered. Yeah. Okay. And also, I will I will explain this. I will I will not go through the slides because it's it's boring, and you're right about that. Can you go to the last one? I can go to the last See? one. So it's but the same structure. Through. You need to really make a different structure. I will go through. I will spend to this. I will spend until the pyramid. That's like 30% of my story, and then this is, is like 10% of the story. I just go through it because they will ask. Um, but actually, what I want to share you is this. I think you will know, but I uh, have taken a very uh, expensive sales training with <coughs> Inventi, the company Inventi, Roger Helton. I don't know you know him, and he learned me his timeline. And it's actually, uh, maybe I want to, I, if, you, if I can, two minutes, I want to share it. Um, because you start with your customer, the festival, um, and this is me, this is Geert, uh, I'm with you, and we're going to work together the next months, we're going to work together, and I put it in a timeline to make it uh, clear for you how we're going to work together. Uh, because there are today a few things we know. We know for sure that the festival campsite will open on the 1st of September. That's for sure. Today it's maybe April. And we are 100% sure that on the 1st of September the festival campsite will open. Today, that's also for sure. What is um, behind us, we know. And uh, when we open the festival campsite, we will start on the uh, last day of August. We start to build it. That are things we are sure. When we gone going to work together, um, we have to go online because we're going to sell it through a web shop. I've told the story, you don't know the story, but the customer know. we got to um, have the uh, things online and from that moment somebody else walks in because I don't do anything alone. I'm just your contact but I have a whole team behind me. We have Evert and Evert is our marketing and online manager. He will put everything online and your team and Evert that have three times contact and so, so what is he doing now by the way this is a, a very good example of creating sense of urgency yeah. this is the end goal to get there you need to be faster otherwise we're not going to make it that's yeah. what you're saying that's what i'm saying and then from the moment we are online somebody else is walks in which is else and else is our customer relationship manager and every question a customer has will be handled by else and else will be go else will go with us the whole 
journey. She will come with us and walks along with me and Evert and you to support you. And at the end, Benjamin walks in because he is our operational guy. He will build it, he will execute I'm it. I'm just wondering, me. if I would be an exec in a large company, this is too much detail. Yeah. You are losing. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because, so, because I would think, how much does it, what's the budget? I'm sure you're going to fix yeah, it. Yeah, that's So true. it depends where you do it. I agree, yeah. it's a good way, yeah. be careful where you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, like you say, create a sense of urgency. I say typically we need 100 days to build your, uh, the, to, to, to execute the project. For a new project, it's 150 days. So we have uh, seven days between the agreement and to get it online. So basically, you have to sign today. Yeah. That's the story. <laughs> but of course, the setting is different. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a, a very good example how you could do it. Yeah. I, I use it, and it's it's. Yeah, I was skeptic about it because it's the first time you do it. It's a little bit, it looks a little bit foolish, and you really, really, really have to um, 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 practice it, and you have to draw it on a piece of paper live, yeah. and that's actually a very. I do something thing. similar, but the way I do it, I draw it. Yeah. But I will ask them dates. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'll yeah. flip it around because otherwise it seems like you're completely taking over. People don't like that, so I'm gonna say, okay, what's the date? Okay. So how much time does procurement need? Okay, so what do you think? Oh, we need about that and that. So I give less detail, but I actually do the same thing. Yeah, and, and, you, and I make the bridge to, I say it's Avers, it's our online. Who in your team is the online no. manager? And then he starts to tell a story about his online manager, and then you can... But how do you end that? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I uh, come with the benefits for them, our partner festivals, and then I end with... The logo <laughs> and this one in the uh, edition 2018, it will say it will say next step. Go on back. I, I Go on it. Go on back. Uh, these are good examples of all stuff that you can actually put a number on. Number, number, number. That's cost. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So here are some examples you could put numbers. Yeah. The, the one thing that he did really well, and, and that's something that a lot of people don't do, is you need to talk about the elephant in the room. For instance, with him, it's Slack. Everybody's going to say it's Slack. So you talk about Slack first. You have a slide, and you say, so let's talk about Slack. <laughs> right? And, and you have to do it, because it makes you stronger. It makes you look like, I know it, yeah, sure. So let's not spend, because if they start talking about it, they ask very nasty questions and they really dig in and you kind of lost momentum and you'll be thinking, damn, I, and you feel bad. No, you started. No Slack, really the company, we're different. And we're different because of that. You should have it in somewhere. Now, of course, if they don't know Slack, you're screwed, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what I would do is I would have the slide ready. If they ask the question, I would open the slide straight away. Okay, good, great question. Let's talk about Slack. Very quickly, a recap of the perfect flow. You remember, you need to answer three questions. Why do I need it? Why do I need it now? It was a very good example. You just saw how you can do that. And why should I pick you? Because you're the expert and you can bring the money, quantify. Start with a reference, show impact, explain their problems with the case of somebody else. This will give you all the authority. Go in why, demo features later, ask let them ask for price, that's the dream scenario. If they talk about it, it means that's buying signals. That means you need to go about it, conclude strong. And you can do this very fast. I do presentations normally, 20 minutes max. I believe in that the brain is rigged for very short. Uh, by the way, that's also a very classic one. These guys, you'll have a meeting of two hours with 20 people. These guys, you'll have a meeting with one guy for 30 minutes, he doesn't have time because he's always onto something new. Right? That's also a very good sense of urgency. Okay. So another tip, the, the big problem is that a lot of people, they make a presentation, they do it once, they think it's not really good, they're going to change something and then they're going to change something again and you never really know what's working, you think you know, but actually what you should make is you should always think, what if I would hire somebody? Because if you want to have scale in your company, you need to think of scale which is hiring. If I would hire somebody, what would I give this guy, what would I tell him to tell? and I'm helping lots of companies at this moment to do this. So actually make a mini script. This is what you need to show. These are the stuff you can move around. 
and do it at least five times. Try and do the same thing five times because then you know statistically, by the way, you know it's working or something's really wrong. That's hard to do, but that's what you need to do. Uh, it's going to make you a lot more professional. If you would work at a company like Google or IBM, you actually get books, playbooks they call that, and you better stick to it or they'll find you. And you know Google, they find you everywhere. So what's working, try different, you get a different exam. The other thing is when the presentation is done, you need to get, you have your actions, you need to get that engagement. That's the key to sales, that's following up. So following up, that's why I said, add a slide in the next section, follow up. Don't send all the slides, send one or two slides. So they ask you for the slides, right? You have a lot of guys that will ask you for the slides, they will never do anything with it. So I ask, okay, I can send you the slides, but what, what do you want to do with it? Oh, I'm going to send it to the team. I got a lot of, I used to work for big corporates, I would get slides the whole time. I would never watch them or I would steal pieces out of it. So why would you, even if they say, why would you send 40 slides? You don't want to do it, you just want to send one or two slides with the key message. So in the equity value story, it would be the one with, with and my contact details all over the place, right? Um, the other thing, just the last one, because the rest is not always relevant, the last one, make the intangible tangible. One of the things that I really see is that when you're selling products and service, it's hard to touch and people like to touch things. You've seen me fidgeting here, by the way. Uh, you saw Cedric doing this the whole time. By the way, Cedric, that's something you need to take care of. You're yes. doing this the whole time. Uh, be aware of that. Um, be careful when you're holding some. You have to really think about how your body is doing and that you're not overdoing it because people get nervous with the tick, tick, tick and that kind of stuff, right? Be careful. Um, one of the things that really works is if you leave something behind they can play with or you enter the room and you put something on the table. One of the best interviews ever was a sales guy with me and I, I was sitting there, me, CEO, being very important with a tie, you know, in the back thinking real alpha pl power players. This young dude walks in, sales guy, and he walks in and he comes to us and he says, hi, I'm Neil, hi, hi. And he just opens his back and he pulls out a, a pink duck and he just puts it in front of us and he goes to sit down. <laughs> We're like, both of us like, damn. So the guy got us straight away and he didn't want to talk about it. So what's the duck? And he says, hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh man, that's, that's beautiful. Because we started fidgeting and it was funny, actually, uh, we hired the guy, not because of the duck, but I really love the approach. Another example was somebody here last time, and she's a, she's a girl, she was in the newspaper actually a few days ago, she makes pants based on this very beautiful pattern of Maya, Inca stuff. And I told her, I said, she said, yeah, but it's not done my product, it's not finished. I said, well, what you do is, if your fabric is so special or your design is so special, have a little piece of it, make a little cloth, leave it, let people fiddle around with it. Right. Another experiment I once done was I, uh, you know, these big buttons, you know, warehouse, they have these big red buttons. I don't know what it is with guys, but if a guy sees a button, he's going to touch it. So I would go to meetings and I knew it was only guys. I would actually bring this thing and I would just put it in the table and I would start. And then one of the guys, what is this thing? I said, just try it. And then I had a, I had a trick when they pushed. I mean, just think of something that makes it really attractive and they will never, ever forget you if you do one of those things. It's not easy but you find one of those things. Uh, another good example was a guy, we, I was sitting in a board and this guy had this idea of a Hoover craft. Like, it's like a drone where you can sit on top of it. And he says, well, uh, I need about six and a half million to build the first prototype. And we're like, good God, yeah. So he said, how can I get the money? So he did all the visits, but it didn't really work. I said, well, because it was a beautiful design picture he showed me. He said, Go to a, sh a shop, let the maquettes, I don't know how you translate, make it in small, go to the 10 richest people in Belgium and give it as a gift. These guys will have it on their desk and they will want to say, I've invested in this thing. It's just making the intangible tangible. It really, really, really works. Last one. How to escape perfection. One of the things that I see everywhere, large to small, is people spend way too much time in trying to make it perfect. I was with a company, they did spend four months on building a website because they couldn't get the text right, they couldn't get the pictures right. In that time, somebody else took their place. And that, their competitor's website, was really, really ugly. But they took the space. So I want you to move 
fast. Perfect? Don't care. Make it look good enough. Good enough is good, even if you don't have anything. I, I'm, I'm doing an experiment with some online training and I have a guy who's helping me and I said, let's just put it up there. And he says, yeah, but you don't have a package. It don't, doesn't matter. I put a price, if somebody clicks on it, I'll have a package. That's the way of thinking. That's how companies move fast. That's how your competition will win or you will win from them. Just be faster, right? Last but not least, I have a YouTube channel. If you want to know more of all these tips, go there. I'm telling a whole story. I actually do the story how to build thought leadership, authority, credibility, how you do all of that. You can find it there. I actually do a session on that. And here is my email address. If you haven't noticed, if you have any questions, you say, hey, Michael, here's my speech. I always have a look, show me the presentation. You get these nice angry emails of, with six lines in there and say, I don't like that. I don't like that. Think like this. Here is an example. That's what I do in the train and I, I help because I think, I believe if I can make revenue for all of you, eventually you'll hire me and we'll all make revenue together, right? So, I'm absolutely confident that even if you apply one of these tips, you will make more money. So I have just one more thing to say, make the sales with Luigi. Any questions, my friends? They're all scared if I would say, come on, here, show me. <laughs> doing your presentation in um, Dutch because your customer is Dutch speaking. Yeah. Do you make your presentation slides in English or in Dutch? It depends a bit on the industry. If I'm in the software space, I do everything in English. If I would go to France, I would have French slides. If I would go to the Netherlands, I would probably have Dutch slides. Actually, I'm lazy. I have everything in English. But if you can, the key to sales is personalization. You are important for me. So normally I have my slides in English, but for you I have translated them. That's a good start. See? But it's a lot of work. Huh? So use a lot of visuals, then you don't have a lot of text to, and some words you just can't translate. More? Good. Off to lunch then, my friends. <laughs>